Hi, it's Jackie with Panama Relocation Tours. Thank you so much for joining me for our Saturday live stream. Today, we're going to have two different segments. The first segment is of me talking about buying real estate in Panama. It's a lot different than what you're used to with buying real estate in other places. And then the second half of our live stream is going to be our Retire in Panama Q&A, where I just take your questions about whatever topics that you want to discuss. So for the benefit of those that are new to our channel, let me just give you a little bit of background about who I am and what Panama Relocation Tours does. My name is Jackie Lang. I'm the owner of Panama Relocation Tours. In 2010, I started the company quite by accident uh, because I'd come to Panama and decided to move here and some of my friends wanted to visit, so I set up a tour for them. And then other people started asking me if I would do a tour for them of Panama also. So that's how the company got started. Uh, we offer all-inclusive six day, seven night uh, tours that take you from one end of the country to the other. And it's like a rolling seminar. We're teaching you all the things you need to do to have a smooth, hassle-free move whenever you come to Panama. We also offer private tours that are just for specific areas. So if you know you wanna live at the beach, you know you want to live on the islands in Bocas, you know you want to live in Panama City. We have private tours also. In addition, we have something uh, that we call our online guide or the complete Panama relocation guide, which is basically a home study course about how to move to Panama. Do it yourself home study course, which also gives you access to our private Facebook group where we offer ongoing support. So um, can everybody hear me okay? Please uh, let me know if you can hear me okay. I've got a new microphone that I'm trying out and I hope it works okay. Um, and then I'm gonna get started on the big topic of buying real estate in Panama. I have a lot of notes over here, so I wanna go by them to make sure I don't forget anything. So first of all, when it comes to buying real estate, we really recommend that you don't rush into buying in real estate whenever you first come here. Real estate agents hate it whenever I say that. They want everybody to just hurry up and buy something as soon as you get here. But let me tell you why that we think that you should wait at least six months and a year would really be better before you rush into buying real estate. Um, first of all, we recommend that you wait until you get your permanent visa because sometimes people, they might get a temporary visa, but their permanent visa is denied or maybe if you rush into buying real estate and then you apply for a visa later, you might find out that your visa was denied, which means you can't really live in Panama um, or you have to leave every 90 days if you want to be able to drive. So I think it would, uh, you need to wait until you get your permanent visa before you buy any real estate. Also, we really recommend that you wait until you've experienced both the dry season and the rainy season. The dry season lasts from about the middle of December until about the middle of April. And then starting about the middle of April until about the middle of December is our rainy season. The two seasons are completely different. Um, in some areas, whenever it's the dry season, it's really, really windy and very dry and dusty. Um, and in some areas, there's a lot more rain than other parts of Panama. So you need to make sure that you've picked an area that you're okay with the dry season and how it is in the area that you're in and that you're okay with the volume of rain uh, where you are. Uh, some of you, I think it's a little bit hard to imagine in the Azura Peninsula, which is down by Chitre, Las Tablas and that area, they only get about 40, 50 inches of rain a year. But last year, for example, in Avalle, they had 220 inches of rain in Avalle last year. And Boquete, where I live, had about 180 inches of rain. Now, that's a lot of rain. And it might not seem like a lot to some people, but other people, once they get here, they decide that the rain is just too much for them. So you really need to experience both the rainy season and the dry season in the area that you're thinking about buying real estate in before you buy anything. Um, and you may decide, hmm, I don't, you know, there's too much wind, too much rain. And then you want to try a different area for at least six months to experience the rainy season and the dry season before you rush into buying anything. Another good reason to wait 
is to learn the market. Um, two things you're going to learn. One is you're going to hear over and over again from people, you know, just over dinner or at a bar drinking a glass of wine, you know, how they had a great experience with a real estate agent. Make note of that, of the real estate agents, that people had a good experience. But you're also going to hear about people that had a horrible experience with a real estate agent and you need to make note of that also. And it just takes time to build up this list of people that you feel that you can trust, that a lot of people have said good things about them. Um, so if you came down here and you just bought real estate right away, you're not knowing if you're working one of the good people or one of the not so good people. And unfortunately, there's plenty of both and both categories here. The other thing that you'll learn by being here uh, for at least a year is you're going to, if your ears to the ground and you kind of put the word out that you're kind of thinking about buying something, you're going to hear about incredible deals where, you know, so-and-so, maybe their husband died and they've decided to move back and they're going to sell at a fire sale price, a really good deal. Um, not listed with an agent, they're just ready to sell it. Um, but you're also going to learn if you follow the market on what were different homes listed for in the area that I'm interested in buying in. What did that home look like? What was it listed for? Try to find out what it actually sold for because the listing price and the sales price could be way off from each other. So if you follow the market, then you're going to learn what's the right price to pay for a property. And along those lines, let me tell you a little story of something that happened about five months ago here in Boquete. Uh, somebody um, in our group, in the Panama Relocation Tour group, um, despite all of my warnings to wait, don't buy till you get your visa, wait for at least a year, they wanted to go ahead and buy because they wanted to ship down a 40-foot container and a 20-foot container of their uh, belongings and they needed a house that they could put it all in. Now, of course, you can rent a vacant house just as well as you can buy a vacant house. But when they were down on their scouting trip, they saw a house that they thought was perfect. Um, it was vacant. They could move all of their stuff in there. They also had a couple of dogs and it had a fence yard and they just knew this house was absolutely perfect. So they went ahead and bought it um, on their scouting trip. Um, they hadn't applied for a visa yet or anything. And then they made arrangements to ship a 40 foot and a 20 foot container to go into that house. Um, three months later, they came down for the closing. Uh, they closed on the house. The next door neighbors came over to say, oh, congratulations on your house. We look forward to having you over for dinner and barbecue and getting to know you. And they say, you got a heck of a deal on that house for $160,000. And the guy said, well, thank you. But, um, you know, we paid it 220. And he said, oh, well, the owners had it listed for 160. So there's this little game that some real estate agents play. It's called a net listing where somebody says they want to sell their house for 160, but the agent could market it for 200 or 220 and um, sell it that way. And the agent makes a, a nice big profit. The seller gets their house sold. You get a house. The problem is, is if anything happens and you need to sell quickly, then it may be hard for you to sell for what you paid for it if you overpaid. Of course, they didn't know what the right price was because they hadn't been here very long. So this guy ran into a lot of problems after they uh, the shipping after the they'd already closed on the house. They'd already moved here. The shipping containers were on their way. They applied for a visa. He had to have a special thing um, because he had some dings on his FBI report. So he had to send his attorney had to send that off to immigration for them to get permission for him to apply. And it was denied. Um, they would not let him get a visa. Um, so here he is. He's bought a house, paid too much, got two shipping containers on the way down here, and he can't get a visa. Um, so they're trying to decide what are they going to do. Well, the wife could just stay and he could leave or he could leave every 90 days. There's all kinds of problems that happen. So that's just one example of why he paid too much because he didn't know the market. He didn't have a visa first. So now he can't live in the house. And it's just one big problem. So I hope you'll take my advice and wait. Don't rush into buying any real estate. Just rent in the area that you're interested in buying in. 
The other thing to know about real estate that's very different, Panama, by the way, I was a real estate investor in Texas for almost 30 years before I moved to Panama and bought and sold thousands of houses. So I'm very familiar with real estate in the United States. And I've bought and sold several houses here in Panama as well. So I'm familiar with the real estate process here in Panama. In Panama, um, unlike the United States, if you go with a real estate agent, the real estate agent is not going to prepare the purchase contract. Sometimes the real estate agent will prepare what they call a letter of intent, or it's just a synopsis of, you know, the buyer's willing to pay this, and these are some provisions that they want, like they want a new survey, or they want certain things um, that are in the contract. So the real estate agent can prepare the letter of intent, but the actual purchase contract must be prepared by a Panamanian attorney. And I highly recommend that you use your attorney. The same attorney that helped you get your residency visa can help you with any real estate purchases. Your attorney is looking out for your best interest. Um, so use your attorney, not the real estate agent's attorney. But the real estate, your attorney can create that letter of intent to purchase the property and everybody signs off on it. Yes, we agree to these terms and conditions then you turn that over to your real estate, your, to your attorney, and they'll create the purchase and sales contract, which is a much longer document and will have more details in it. Um, and then once all the terms and conditions and everything have been met for the purchase contract, then your attorney will also create all of the closing documents uh, for the property. Um, I just recently sold a house in April my attorney prepared the purchase contract. She prepared all the closing documents. She's in Panama City. I'm in Boquete. She sent them to me through something called Uno Express, which is like an in-country courier service. I got those documents. Um, I met the buyer of my property at a notary's office in David, and we did the closing. So here there are no title companies. There are no escrow offices. You actually go to a notary's office to do the closing because I'm a U.S. citizen and my buyer was a U.S. citizen. It's also required that you have a translator, an official uh, translator that read the deed to us um, of all the terms and conditions on the deed. Just started pouring down rain here and big thunder. So I hope I don't lose power. But if I do, you'll know why. So your attorney is going to be very involved. And there are certain things that have to happen before you can even go to closing. The seller of the property has to pay two different taxes. One is a 2% tax and one is a 3% tax. And it's like a capital gains tax that has to be paid before you can go to closing. They'll want to see a receipt for it. So it's very common that whenever you buy a property here in Panama that you give the seller of the property at least 5%, sometimes 10%, um, deposit uh, so that they can use that money to pay the taxes. You could request that it be held in escrow by your attorney or by the seller's attorney, not the real estate agent, but uh, an attorney. And then they just have to come up with the funds themselves to be able to close. So that's important for you to know. Also, um, another, another thing that's a little bit different about real estate here in Panama is um, you can, there are several different ways that you can take title to a property. You can take title in your own name if you want to. Um, you can take title in the name of a corporation. You can take title in the name of what's called a private interest foundation, which has laws that are similar to trust. Panama doesn't have trust, but a private interest foundation um, is similar to trust. And there's pros and cons on each one of those. If you take title in your own name and you're a U.S. citizen, you do not have to report that property or the transaction to the U.S. government. But if you take title to the property in a corporation or in a private interest foundation, then because you have an offshore corporation, um, that has to be reported to the U.S. Mm -hmm. government every single year. And there's special forms. If you're working with a CPA, they can help you with it. Also, even TurboTax has the forms available, but that does have to be reported. Also in Panama, if you decide to take title in a corporation or the private interest foundation, there's going to be annual renewal fees for that corporation, um, which is 300 to $400 plus whatever your registered agent fee is. And then also, 
just a second. I'm going to get a drink. Today I have a green drink. No hibiscus tea. That's celery, kale, and limes that I'm drinking. Um, so, Billy, if you could hold off on your question, uh, I'm going to, for about 15 more minutes, I'm going to talk about buying real estate in Panama, and then I'm going to open it up for your questions. So if everybody could just hold off on your questions until I finish talking about real estate, because if you're thinking about moving to Panama, you need to know about real estate if you're considering buying it. So if you take title in a corporation, not only are there annual renewal fees that you have to pay in Panama, but there's annual reporting that you're going to have to do in the country that you move from. Um, many countries require if you have any kind of an offshore bank account or offshore corporations, that has to be reported to your government every year. So there's pros and cons. The good thing about taking title in a private interest foundation is you can completely avoid probate, um, which is important. But even if you take title in a corporation, the corporation documents are going to say, if anything were to happen to me, I want you know, my property be sold and 50% of the proceeds go to this person, 50% go to that person. So you can spell out what you want to happen in the corporate documents. Um, if it's a property you're going to live in, it's probably better to do the private interest foundation so that you can completely avoid probate. And then those documents also say what you want to the ha happen to the property in case anything were to happen to you. Uh, another thing that you need to be aware of here in Panama, I know where you come from, it's probably all the real estate is titled real estate. Well, in Panama, that's not the case. In Panama, some property is titled, but some property here is what's called right of possession, also called ROP, which means that whenever you buy it, you do not get title to the property. You have a document that says you're, you're, you bought that. Uh, but you cannot get title because it doesn't have a title. So they can't transfer a title that doesn't exist. It is possible to get ROP property changed over into title property, but that process could, I know one person took seven years and it cost him $100,000 for him to get his little $400,000 house converted into titled uh, property, but he was just having a really hard time finding a buyer with it being ROP property. So and many of the attorneys in Panama will not work with ROP properties. Um, so um, be careful about buying anything that's right of possession because too many problems can happen. Uh, the inter the, my internet just clicked a little bit. I hope I'm still online. I don't know. Um, so the other thing that you should know is about financing. Many real estate here in Panama is purchased with cash. Um, if you can't pay cash for the property, you have two choices. One is you may be able to, um, you, so I'm still online. Okay, good. So one of the choices is you may be able to get bank financing. Bank financing is going to require 30% down, sometimes more, but usually 30% down in cash. Uh, they'll also require that you have a life insurance policy for at least the amount of the value of the property, naming the bank as the beneficiary, just in case you kick the bucket before you pay off the loan. But here's the really big kicker part, is all loans in Panama have to be paid off by the time you're 70 years old. So if you're coming down here as a retiree and you're already 64, 65 years old and you want to buy real estate, and get financing, well, it has to be paid off in five years. And that's going to be a little bit hard to do unless you're just waiting on the sale of a property someplace else, and then you're going to be able to get it paid off from that. So if, if bank financing isn't really an option for you because of the 30% down, because of the being paid off when you're 70, the other alternative is buying real estate with seller financing. Sometimes you'll see real estate that's advertised that they will accept seller financing, but often it's not advertised, but if you just ask, they will. And I've helped many of our Panama Relocation Tour clients buy real estate with seller financing with usually 10%, maybe 15% down, and usually no interest at all. There's no life insurance uh, required. There's no balloon by the time you turn 70 
So seller financing is an excellent way to be able to buy real estate. Whether you're going to be living in the property or you want to buy real estate that you can turn around and rent out to someone else, then you can um, buy with seller financing. Even if it's not advertised, it doesn't hurt to ask. Worst case, they'll say no. Um, sometimes they'll say, well, I'll do it, but I want to be paid off in three years or five years. Um, so you can, there's all kinds of strategies for negotiating. Well, at the end of five years, if I give you another $10,000, Will you extend it for another five years? Um, or um, at the end of the five years, maybe uh, before it's up, you can go back and renegotiate and say, hey, I can pay you off early if you'll give me a discount. So there's all kinds of ways that you can buy real estate in Panama. The most common is cash, but you can also get super creative. And I've been a creative real estate investor for a long time, so I love getting creative when it comes to buying real estate. Some other things, I've got my notes over here, I'm checking. Some other things that you should know is that um, in other countries, um, the real estate agent that you're working with to buy real estate, they have a fiduciary responsibility to you to do everything to represent your interest um, in a purchase or the sale of a property. In Panama, they don't have a fiduciary relationship with you. Now, some agents are absolutely going to do that. They're going to put your interest above their own, but many agents here, all they care about is getting the biggest commission possible. Um, so, you know, if you see a property for 300,000, you say, you know, really, I don't think it's worth more than 250, will you offer it? Well, they're not even required to make that offer here. And what's in it for them to offer only 250 uh, when they're gonna get a bigger commission if you pay 300. So the whole dynamics of real estate is a little bit different here. Um, I've only, let's see if I bought anything, I haven't bought a single property in Panama that was ever listed with a real estate agent. And since 1992, when I started my real estate business and thousands of houses, I've only bought one house that was listed. I've always bought directly from the owner and it's just easier transaction to do it that way. Let's see, I've got about eight more minutes to cover a couple more topics. So I've talked about financing. I've talked about how to take title. Um, also, one other thing that you should know is that any property that was built before 2012 here in Panama, that it has a 20-year tax exoneration. That means that you pay no property taxes uh, for that 20 years. Like the property that I just sold, it has a tax, ex tax exoneration until 2033 no property taxes for a long time. Um, so whenever you're buying real estate, always put in the contract that you want the tax exoneration to be moved over to you. And it can be moved over to you so you also won't have any property taxes. Now, if you're buying a condo or certain properties, um, you're still going to have to pay taxes on some of it, but the majority of it, you'll have no property taxes. They did redo the tax laws. I think it was in 2018. They redid the property laws and the numbers have changed a little bit. But basically, if you buy a house and the land that it's on for less than $125,000 here in Panama, you'll never have any property taxes. So one of the strategies that you might use is very often in Panama when you're buying real estate, you're buying the real estate and it's completely furnished, pots and pans and dishes and light fixtures and everything comes with it. So if you separate those two out to where you're buying the real estate for $125,000 or less, and then you do a completely separate contract for the personal property, which would be the furniture, the pots and pans, the light fixtures, the appliances, those are all actually personal property. They're not real estate. If you separate that out into two separate contracts, then you may be able to keep the value of the real estate that you're buying below 125 so you can always have no property taxes on it. So that's a good little tip to help you save a lot of money. But, you know, even if you have taxes in Panama, for example, um, the house that I sold, to someone, um, they still have a tax exoneration until 2033, but even then their taxes are going to be like $700 a year. So it's not very much, but if you're on a tight budget, 
then you may want to separate out the contracts where there's a real estate contract and there's a personal property contract so that you can keep your property values down as low as possible. So that's a good little tip for me to end it all with. And I have a lot of other notes here about buying real estate. Um, one of the things I want to end it with is that in our complete Panama relocation guide, we have a list of recommended real estate agents that you work with. These are people that they've consistently over the 10, 12 years that I've known them, they've always been honest and ethical. Um, if people are not on that list, uh, there's a reason why. And um, so I just recommend that we're, you know, whether it's Panama City or wherever in the country, use one of our recommended real estate agents for finding real estate. Um, the ideal situation is actually to find it and buy directly from the owner. Let me give you one little tip on how you can do that. If you're in with a taxi driver and you said, I'd really like to buy a house here, do you know anybody that really needs to sell their house fast? And you know, I can pay cash. And if you can help me find a house, I will give you $500. Well, the taxi drivers know everybody because a lot of people, they don't even have a car here in Panama. They take, take a taxi everywhere. So they pick up this lady. They're taking her to the doctor. And she says, you know, I really need to sell my house. And so the taxi drivers know. They know the motivated sellers. So get in a taxi driver. Get in with a taxi driver and start um, – talking to them about buying real estate. Buster's wanting to come through. Come on, Buster. Come on. Come on over here. No, he's not going to come. He'll come back in a little bit. So those are some good tips for you about buying. Uh, there you can see him in the background about talking to taxi drivers, about finding motivated sellers that are willing to sell their house um, at a really good price. You can avoid all real estate commissions. And then the other big tip, is for you to separate out the contracts where real estate is on one and uh, the personal property is on a completely separate contract. The seller gets the same amount of money, but the benefit to you is that you can reduce your taxes. You can't come in here right now. He wants to walk right across here. So, um, yes, that, those tips are all in the guide. Um, and let me put this banner up. I think I have a banner. Hold on. So if you look on our website, PanamaRelocationTours.com, at the very top, there's a link that says online guide. If you click on that, you can read about what comes with the online guide. Um, and um, that's where we have all that kind of information. I also have an article on my website, uh, Panama Relocation Tours, and the search feature, if you type in buying real estate, then a lot of the things I've talked about are in there. Not all the things. I share some special tips with you on today's live stream, but you can just get an overview of everything there. So now, um, first 30 minutes was about real estate. The second half of our live stream is going to be about um, your questions, whatever questions that you have. The way that it has to work, though, I'm not able to just click on your link and unmute your line. Um, you're going to have to type your question into the search bar. Um, over on the chat bar, over on the side. And if you'll please put three question marks in front of it, then I can quickly and easily identify it as a question. So here's one from Beth. If your video goes off for whatever reason or any of your chats, any suggestion for how long we should hang around before we can assume you've stopped trying to get back online. So if I'm not back online in three minutes, then probably give up. Um, and it is pouring down rain with thunder right now. So hopefully it's going to keep on working just fine. But it's Panama, so things can happen. Remember, you have to put three question marks in front of your question or I won't know that it's a question. Next uh, question is from Maria. Are there developers in Panama that are selling homes that will be closing in the future date, say 2027? And do they have down payment structure? So there are some developers that do what's called pre-construction, which I would never, ever, ever advise that you do pre-construction. Um, and some of them do have a future closing date, but there's no guarantee that it's ever going to get finished. Um, there's no guarantee that the price that you put in your contract, this has happened to two different people that I know. 
Um, they bought a house. They're not our clients, but I know that they bought a house pre-construction for like three hundred sixty-five thousand, and then whenever it was finally finished, one year late. When it was finally finished, one year late, the sales were slow, so the developer dropped the price to two eighty-five for the very same unit. So those people that bought pre-construction for three sixty-five instantly lost a lot of money. So I wouldn't advise doing any kind of pre-construction. Some um, developers on a home that's already finished will offer um, maybe two years of seller financing, but then you have to get your own financing. So the best way is not to do that. It's either get bank financing if you can, but remember it has to be paid off by the time you turn 70 and you're not going to need 30% down and you have to do a life insurance policy the easiest and best way is to buy with seller financing and the taxi drivers are the ones that can help you find those motivated sellers that will definitely um, entertain as uh, uh, seller financing. Another question from Anna is the tax exoneration for properties built before or after 2012 was before 2012. Um, anything before 2012 has a tax exoneration. Uh, what are the details on property tax again? Um, so the details changed. Um, what the rules were before and what the rules are now are completely different. If you look at our online guide and you just type in the search feature taxes, then I have the complete tax structure. The new tax structure, um, it depends on if the house is under 125, then it has one kind of tax. If it's between 125 and I think 500,000, it's a different tax so between 500 in 750, it's a different tax than over 750, a different tax. So it got more complicated in 2008. Uh, so Ben has a question, what is the risk of buying property with undeclared enhancements? So those would, I wouldn't, you know, of course, anytime you're going to buy a property, you're going to ask the seller if they have a survey. And even if they have a survey, it's a good idea for you to get your own survey um, with a surveyor that you're not the real estate agent, but that your attorney recommends because um, there will be perhaps um, um, the lines might not be right. It may be that, you know, they said they're selling you 750,000 meters of land and it's really 650,000 meters of land. So there could be some discrepancies. So um, I wouldn't buy anything that has undeclared enhancements or um, this is just an example. Whenever I bought my house, um, the very first house I bought here in 2012, um, it never had a certificate of occupancy. I'd been living in it for two years and it never had a certificate of occupancy. There was nothing in the records that that house had even been built. Um, so you run the risk of that. Of, if you do that, you run the risk of you're going to be the one that's going to be responsible for paying any penalties uh, for that not happening. So whenever I bought my house in 2012, I insisted that they get a certificate of occupancy and that it be uh, that it be registered, that the whole blueprints and everything be registered um, in the province that it was in before I closed. Uh, so Jackie, please elaborate on foundation versus putting property in your own name. So if you put the property in your own name and let's say um, you, then you don't have to report it to your government. Many, many uh, countries require that if you have offshore real estate and it's held in a corporation or a foundation, then you, you have to report the corporation or the foundation and whatever assets that it has. But if the property is in your own name, that does not have to be reported to your government. The good thing about having your property in a foundation, even though it has to be reported to your government, even though it has annual renewal fees, is that you can avoid probate. And so if you're moving to Panama and you're already a little bit older, it would be nice that if anything were to happen to you, that you could completely avoid probate. So that's what the foundation does for you. So Kevin wants to know, do you have a mini tour for the mountains that include the relocation guide? 
So we do. We offer private tours for the mountain areas, whether it's a Valle, Bocan, or Boqueche. We have uh, tours for those, private tours for those. It's actually required that you purchase the relocation guide first for $595, and then you get access to our list of all of the private tour guides. And I think our private tour guide for Avaye uh, for a full day only charges $140. Um, now the tour guides for Boqueche and Volcan, they charge more because it usually also includes many of the towns that are south of uh, Boqueche or south of Volcan and usually includes David as well. Um, so you do have to just look in the online guide or look in our section about private tours and you'll see more details. Um, if I purchase a home and later decide to rent it out while I'll travel, are there any issues? Um, so there, Hayden, there could be some issues um, on you renting it out, depending on where it is. First of all, you need to know that you have a really good property manager that's going to be managing it for you. And you could tap into those real estate agents that we recommend in the online guide. Um, the other issue that you're going to have are taxes. Um, if you rent it out, if it's if you're making any money in Panama, like from a rental, then that means you have to report that income to the Panamanian government and pay taxes on it. Um, also, depending on what country you're from, you may have to report that income to your country as well. For example, I'm a U.S. citizen. I have to report my worldwide income and pay taxes on it. So, yes, you would have to pay taxes in Panama and potentially in the country that you're moving from as well not to mention um, just picking the right tenant and getting the right property manager. Monique wants to know, are those creative strategies mostly used when purchasing property from other U.S. citizens or foreigners or will Panamanians also participate? Well, I bought six houses with creative financing from Panamanians here in Panama. So, yes, it absolutely works with Panamanians. You just ask, um, you know, um, and I have tons of strategies because I taught creative real estate for so long. So I have tons of strategies on creative ways to buy real estate without using bank financing and with using very, very, very little money down. Okay, some more question marks here. By the way, in case you're a little bit late getting in, if you have a question for me, if you would please put three question marks in front of your question so I can quickly and easily identify it as a question for me. Uh, are the homes in the Boquete Volcan area provided with public water supply or cisterns? Um, so the houses in Boquete and in Volcan both have mu what's called municipal water. Um, so they're going to have that. Most all of the homes in uh, Boquete and in Volcan are going to have a septic tank. Can you get a permanent resident if we rent instead of buying? Absolutely. Yeah, there's no requirement to buy real estate in Panama at all. Even with the Friendly Nation visa, you know, there's three ways that you can get the Friendly, well, four ways that you can get the Friendly Nation visa. One is to buy real estate. One is to put money in a bank account in Panama. One is to get a job in Panama. The other one is to just set up a corporation that gives you a labor contract and hires you. So there's absolutely no requirement to buy real estate in Panama. You can get permanent residency by just being a renter. Penny wants to know, everything talks about the windy times in areas like Boquete. I'm from Texas. So high winds means... 25 to 30 miles an hour. Well, bump that up to about 40, um, sometimes 50 miles an hour in Alto Boquete and some other areas. It just depends on where you are. If you kind of live in a valley, it's going to be less windy. If you live up on a plateau, like in Alto Boquete, then it can be, it can be, it's been so windy sometimes that I went to someone's house and I could not open my door to get out of my car because the wind was so strong. Um, I had to reposition my car to be able to get my car door open. I'm talking really windy. Mark wants to know, Jackie, do you know anything about the electric supplier at Valle Escondido? I've been told that VE is changing to the regular provider. 
Well, all I know is that the people that, that Valle Escondido, that people pay Valle Escondido for their electricity, and it's extremely expensive. Um, I haven't heard that they're going to change to the regular provider, but I certainly hope that they do so people quit getting gouged for real estate prices there. Daniel wants to know, can I fly back to Panama one way on my temporary visa? Yes, you can. Once you have your temporary visa, you're not required to have a, a round trip ticket. You can have a one way ticket. Um, are the creative strategies for home buying in the online guide? So I don't have um, all the creative strategies for home buying in the online guide. I've written several books about creative strategies for buying and selling real estate. And I could certainly put those in the online guide if people would be interested in that. Or you can just ask me about creative ways because I have tons of creative ways of buying real estate. So, um, is Costco Ohio nearby the two Johns Hopkins hospitals? Um, it's not very far. It's not I wouldn't say walking distance, but it's not very far. It's a five-minute taxi ride, 10-minute taxi ride, depending on the time of day. Bill wants to know, is there a legal requirement that dictates when a condo developer must turn over the HOA to its residents? Sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, and um, it probably, it depends. Every condo probably has different rules. You definitely want to read the deed restrictions uh, for the condo and what the rules are before you jump into buying a condo. The other thing about even renting a condo, it's a good idea to know what those deed restrictions are because some condo complexes, they have a rule that the, a unit cannot be rented out for less than 30 days or less than uh, three days or less than six months. And you need to know what the rules are because if you are in a complex that allows a lot of Airbnbs and there's just a constant turnover, uh, then you're never going to really get to know who your neighbors are. And people are mostly going to use the condos for just a party palace with loud music and lots of people being crammed into units. You need to know what the rules are even before you rent, let alone buy a condo. Joe says, water, is it profitable to buy a pineapple farm? Well, I don't know. I've never bought a pineapple farm, and I think it would depend on what your purchase price is, what your ROI is, um, if you can get terms on buying it instead of paying cash for it. Um, pineapples are everywhere here in Panama. You can get a great big, huge pineapple for about $1. So you'd have to sell a lot of pineapples um, here in Panama for them to be profitable. Also, um, do some research on what are the export laws on exporting pineapples to other countries. I don't know what they are, but you could find out. Um, Hayden wants to know, forgot to ask if I rent out my home while I travel, will the pen pensionado visa be okay? Um, actually, you're supposed to, if you're making, if you're selling anything, if you're selling a product, you're selling a service, you're supposed to have a work permit in Panama. Um, if you, uh, you need to talk to your immigration attorney about ways that you can do it with just a pensionado visa. But don't forget, you're going to have to pay taxes. You're going to have to report that income and pay taxes on it here in Panama and also perhaps in your country too. Um, so, hi, Jackie. Researched online panonomy. It's a popular jumped off from 20 to 80. Oh, is the population from 20 to 80? Is this accurate? What fuels the growth? So, this is how the population is a little bit different. For example, um, in the town of Panonomi, just in the city limits, it might be 20,000 people. But in the Panonomi district, which encompasses several other little towns, but it's still considered the Panonomi district, that would be 80,000. Just like here in Boquete, the downtown Boquete area is about 30, 35,000, but the Boquete district, which covers a much larger area, is more like 70,000 people. So that's, it's not that there's been a huge population growth in the area, it's just whether you're looking at the numbers for downtown, 
a population for downtown or if you're looking at the whole district. You hear Buster in the background? We're going to wait. He wants TV time. We're, I promised him we have TV time after this, so he's ready. By the way, uh, for those of you in Boquete or that are coming to Boquete, there's a new uh, Mexican food restaurant that opened up called Che Cool, T-A-C-O-O-L. And today I was in town with a friend. She's buying a condo and she wanted me to go look at it. So I needed to rush back home to be able to do this um, live stream. But I stopped off at Che Cool and I got um, some enchiladas and a mango margarita that I brought home with me. And it's waiting for me for after this live stream. And I already had two bites of the enchilada and it's really good. So I can't wait to enjoy it after this live stream along with my mango margarita. Uh, so Andrea says, what is the average down payment needed to obtain a mortgage from a Panamanian bank? So most banks are going to require 30% down, um, which is quite a lot of a down payment. Whereas if you're buying with seller financing, you can usually get by with just 10% down if you're buying with seller financing. So um, if anybody has a question for me, all you need to do is put three question marks in front of it. And I will be glad to um, click on the three question marks so I can answer. So Daryl says, are you able to buy property under a U.S. corporation or an LLC? You can buy property under a U.S. corporation or an LLC. Um, However, you know, there could be some complications with it. You can do that. The other thing you can do is if you have a self-directed IRA, uh, then you can write a letter of direction for your self-directed IRA to invest in real estate in Panama. Of course, you can't live in that property because it's an investment for your IRA, but the proceeds from the rent would go back into your IRA. So it's a good way to use some of your self-directed IRA or 401k money. Okay, I think I've already seen some of these questions before. What's the average down payment? Okay, can you describe the process of building your own home? So building your own home um, is going to start with working with a Panamanian architect is the best thing to do. The Panamanian architect is going, before you buy the land to build on, the Panamanian architect is going to help you evaluate the land and see if it's appropriate. You know, does it perk? Meaning, can you put in a septic tank there? Does it have water? Does it have electric? If not, can you get it? What's it going to cost to get it? How long will it take to get it? So you want to start the whole process by working with an architect. In Panama, the plans for your house have to be drawn up by a Panamanian architect, and they're going to help you get the building permit. Uh, sometimes the building people and this is you need to do all this before you actually buy anything. The building people will come out and they're going to say, well, this is going to create some erosion problems. So we're going to require that you put in um, you know, $50,000 worth of um, improvements to the land so that it doesn't cause erosion to other properties down the hill, up the hill or next to you. So, the Panamanian architect that you're working with, they're going to know all those rules and procedures. Please, please, please don't buy the land first and then decide you're going to build on it. That's happened so many times with people that have discovered they bought something that they really can't build on um, without spending a bunch of money to get it to the place where the city wants it to be. So always start with working with a Panamanian architect. Um, so I have dollar signs. Is it accurate that once you're age 70, the banks will not notify you? Not yet. You can't qualify for a loan. All loans have to be paid off by the time you're 70. You're not going to be able to get a new loan. If you're already 70, you're not going to be able to get a new loan. Um, but if you're 70 years old, you can still buy houses with seller financing. You're just not going to be able to get a new loan. And if you got a loan when you were 68 years old, it has to be paid off. 
by the time you're 70. There's a few banks that'll go till 72 or 73, but for the most part, the bank, bank loans have to be paid off early. Uh, Rita says to apply for a friendly nations visa, you, do you have to have property under contract before initiating? So this is what we really recommend that you do for the friendly nation visa. You know, it's $200,000 in real estate or $200,000 in a Panama bank account we, in a three-year CD. We recommend that you put the money in the bank instead of buying real estate and your immigration attorney will most likely recommend the very same thing. And then um, because you have that money that's already in the bank, that can be used as collateral for you to get a loan to be able to buy the real estate if, if your ultimate goal is to buy real estate. But it's better and faster if you just put the money in the bank first and then work on property later. Don't be rushed into buying real estate for the purpose of getting a friendly nation visa. Okay. Is their website or app similar to Indeed for employment in Panama? Um, if you look on our website, uh, PanamaRelocationTourist.com, on the upper right-hand corner, if you type in get a job, um, then we have a link to several different uh, websites where you can go about jobs that are available. The best paying jobs in Panama are going to be with a multinational company, and I have a list, I think, of about 50 multinational companies that are routinely hiring people. So you can just look on their website to see what jobs that they have available. But I have that right there. Are there any restrictions on building on some land, for example, Greenbelt land, other than what the architect says is workable? you need to get a planning permission like in the UK. Um, so yes, the architect, you're going to have to get a planning permission. Um, there are some areas where you really can't build um, because of drainage, because of easements. There's all kinds of things, but that's why you just need to work with an architect and they're going to be able to help you before you buy the land, before you write a contract on it, they're going to help you be able to assess the land that you're thinking about buying. Um, they're also going to know there's some areas where it might get a lot of wind or some areas where it's completely impossible to get water to that property. There's no municipal water to the property, so you'd have to dig a well. Well, how far do you have to go? What's that going to cost? So the architect can help you with all of those things. In the online guide, we do have some recommendations for architects for you also. Um, so Mark wants to know, is it normal for a condo in Valle Escondido to have no AC or heat? Yes, it's very common because the Valle Escondido is at about 36, 3,700 feet. And uh, usually it doesn't get hot enough to need air conditioner and, or nor cold enough uh, to need a heater. So that's very common. I know some of the uh, condos and villas that are in Valle Escondido do have an air conditioner perhaps in the bedroom. It's called the split system that's up on the wall. I think I have one here. Yeah, I have one here. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. Can you see it up there? That's what a split system looks like. It's in my office here. Let me put this back on. So that's what it looks like. And they have those in some of the condos there. And if, if it's not there, they're only about $200 to buy those and about $100. $50 to get it installed. So if you get hot easily, it may be worth it to have that put in. So Penny wants to know, is it permissible to have an online business? Do you have to do business with people outside of Panama? So if I'm assuming that your question is, if I get a pensionado visa, is it permissible? Well, camera's not doing the right thing here. If you have a pensionado visa, yes, you can have an online business if you're selling products or services to people outside of Panama. But if you want to sell to people inside Panama, you need to have a work permit, uh, which means you need to get a different visa than the pensionado visa. 
Bruce wants to know, are banks pretty safe in Panama? Any deposit insurance and who backs that insurance? Um, so banks are very safe in Panama. They go by different rules than they do in the United States. I actually have an article on my website that talks about the banking safety. So if you just uh, search our website and the search feature for bank safety, um, you'll find that article. There is no insurance like FDIC at all. What people do in Panama instead of insurance is they don't put all their eggs in one basket. So you might have two or three different bank accounts in Panama with different banks. And um, if you hear, remember, Panama's never had a bank failure. Panama's never had a, a bank bailout uh, like they've had in other countries. Um, so, but if you were to hear rumblings that there's some problems at one of the banks and you happen to have money in there, but just the click of a mouse and a little app on your phone, you can move money from one bank to another bank in about one minute. So you can quickly and easily move your money away. So that's how you ensure yourself here. You just diversify and you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed our um, little talk about buying real estate in Panama and some creative ways to buy it. Maybe I should do live stream one time on just creative ways to buy real estate because there's many, many others besides just seller financing. There are ways to negotiate, um, creative ways to negotiate. So maybe sometime I'll do one just about creative real estate. You know, I used to have another company and um, besides being a real estate investor, I taught real estate um, seminars all over the world. Um, I had online training for real estate investors and um, it was all about low risk, no bank financing, very, very little money down whenever you buy real estate. And I've used that to buy many, many, many different properties, um, mobile home parks, um, 18,000 acre ranches. Um, I bought so many different things, all with creative financing. So it was fun. But whenever I moved to Panama, I thought I was going to be retired from all of that. But I see many of the things that I use for creative real estate in Texas and in Florida and other places where I bought, um, that those things all apply here to Panama too. And the Panamanians appreciate um, getting an offer that sometimes it's going to net them more money. You know, sometimes if uh, someone just gets a, a big bunch of cash for their house, it's a blessing for them, but sometimes what's more of a blessing for them is if they get a monthly cash flow that they know that they can rely on and that if anything were to happen to them, that cash flow is going to go on to their children so that they know that they can take care of their children even later on. So whenever you explain it to people the right way, well, I could pay you this much cash or I could give you this much down and get you this much money every single month. And that money is going to keep coming in even whenever you're gone. Um, then they love that idea. So there are so many creative things that you can do with real estate, even here in Panama. One of these days, I'll have a live stream and teach you all about that too. Or I'll start putting some of that information in our online guide so you'll have it readily available there also. So I hope you enjoyed this live stream about buying real estate, creative real estate buying, and then answering some of your questions also. Next Saturday, I have a special guest and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can get these notifications. Next Saturday, I have a special guest, William, who recently in the last um, six months moved from Oaxaca, Mexico to Panama. Find out why um, on our live stream. He's renting an amazing new house, two bedroom house with a swimming pool for $500 a month. So when you join us next Saturday, you're going to learn where that is, how he found it. And uh, he doesn't have a car, so you're going to learn how he gets around um, without a car and everything else. So you're really going to enjoy our live stream for next Saturday. Now I'm going to go enjoy my mango margarita and some enchiladas. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend too. Goodbye, everybody.